do you guys remember this graphics card, the GTX 1060 and the days when we used to be able to get a card like this for $200 or even the budget champion at this time, if you really wanted to get into PC gaming, you could get a GTX 1050 Ti. Now this thing was really good value and it came in $140. Or on the AMD side of things, you could pick up an RX 480 or 580. But nowadays, what are we getting? A 1060 that went for $200 is now $300 in 2023. This is the entry point to get an NVIDIA graphics card. AMD is basically doing the same thing with their 7000 series graphics cards. So you can get the cheapest one available is the RX 7600. And this thing is $270. This is confirmed, like this is the last card that AMD is going to be introducing. Is that going to complete the RDNA 3 portfolio or is there maybe more on the horizon? <laughs> uh, well, the RDNA 3 portfolio is now complete. Really, what are your options? You have to pay that much or you can try to scout some deals from the last generation. On NVIDIA side of things, they offer an RTX 3050 and I wouldn't be out here recommending the 3050. You check out these performance that Daniel Owen showed for it. On AMD side of things, for around that $200 price point, you should really be getting the 6600 nowadays. So if you want a budget entry level graphics card from the latest GPUs that are coming out, what options are there? I mean, there's really nothing. So here enters Intel, wanting to fill that underserved part of the market with a budget GPU. This is the ARC A580, and it's coming at, a, at $180. But just the sheer price of this thing puts a smile on my face, and it's so freaking tiny and cute. That doesn't mean it's bad on performance, it's just so freaking cute. But today what I want to compare is the RX 6600 versus the A580 from Intel. Well, let's go ahead and start checking out these graphics cards in some games and even in productivity like Blender and DaVinci Resolve for video editing and stuff. Let's do that. Now in Cyberpunk, if you play at 1080p on the high preset driving through Dogtown here, then you can see these cards, there's only a 2% difference between them. And if you bump up Cyberpunk to 1440p, now these aren't 1440p graphics cards at all, but you can see that the ARC A580, because of the 256-bit memory bus, it scales better when you up the resolution because the memory is faster. Also, and this seems to be a running trend that Intel cards are better at ray tracing. You can see that the 6600 with the RT medium press preset in Cyberpunk is 18% slower than the ARC A580. And if you hop into another game like a Plague Tale Requiem, we see that the ARC A580 also performs pretty well against the 6600. The 6600 at 1080p on the ultra quality scaling mode on the high settings is 11% slower than the ARC A580. And if you just turn on ray trace shadows in this game, you can see the 6600 is 33% slower than the ARC A580. Remember the 6600 costs $20 more than it right now. That's not a huge amount of money, but it's slower in certain cases. And that also includes a game like Resident Evil 4 Remake. With the prioritized graphics preset at 1080p, we can see that the 6600 is 7% slower than the ARC A580. And also, if we go to 1440p, it is also slower. But we can also see some of the inconsistencies that come up with the ARC A580. If you turn on FSR quality, the 6600 runs away with the lead at 1440p prioritized graphics. And I think this is because it's a first generation product or because I'm on a press driver with a specific card. That sometimes it can just be a little buggy. In Fortnite at 1080p on the high settings rasterized, so no lumen, no ray trace or anything. In DirectX 11, you see that the 6600 is 33% faster than the ARC A580. That is pretty freaking significant. Yes, the A580 is still providing over 100 FPS at this in this case, but that doesn't really matter when you know you can just get more with the 6600. Plus, if you go to DirectX 12, you can see that the difference increases even more. And if you stay in DirectX 12 and turn on Nanite and Lumen with Unreal Engine 5 and Fortnite here, you can see the 6600 is 38% faster than the ARC A580. And that is pretty significant when it comes down to it. But if you use the hardware accelerated ray tracing for it, you can see that the 6600 is only 11% faster here. So because the ray tracing is better on the Intel Arc card, it can kind of make up that gap. But you know, you could just use the software accelerated version of Nanite and Lumen if you really wanted that. Then another game like Last of Us Part 1, we see some more oddities. The 6600 is almost 30% faster in this game. And if you go up to 1440p, I know you probably wouldn't use these cards at 1440p. We're not seeing very good FPS really on either of them. But if you turn on FSR quality on the high preset, 
It's like the ARC A580 just doesn't really respond that well to the upscaling. And then if you turn off FSR, then it's 186% faster. Like this has to be a VRAM issue going on here, but the 6600 is just way better in this case. If you hop into Overwatch 2, the 6600 is significantly faster. We're pulling in over 300 FPS here, which would mean to give you the ability to up settings and still get high refresh rates on your monitor. Whereas you can't do the same thing on the A580, although these are still both very good esports cards. In Remnant 2, the A580 just seems like it's completely broken in this. At 1080p on the medium preset, not, not anything demanding, the ARC A580 is only providing like a 33 average FPS, and that means the 6600 is, is at 67 average FPS, and it's 103% faster than the ARC A580. So the A580 can be pretty inconsistent and have wild performance differences than these cards, but I do have some hope that this A580 might perform a little bit better in the future because in a lot of games the A580 was struggling in completely, the A750 tends to perform a lot better in those ones, like Remnant 2, like in Starfield it performs a lot better. Not perfect, but a decent chunk better. So what makes me hopeful is that because the A750 is better in these games than the A580 with some more driver updates and stuff like that, will also get better over time. I'm not 100% sure if that's true and you really shouldn't buy things off of a promise. Although there is one area where the ARC A580 against the 6600 it actually is, is a pretty favorable matchup and that comes into productivity. The ARC A580 at this budget $180 price point does have AV1 encoding and the RX 6600 just doesn't offer that because it's not from the latest generation of cards. And if you compare these cards in terms of rendering performance on H.265, then you can see that the ARC A580 comes in a lot faster than the RX 6600. We're talking four minutes, 52 seconds on the ARC card versus seven minutes on the, the RX 6600. And that could definitely make a difference in how you can render out videos, how you can edit videos and scrub through the timelines and stuff like that. But it's not just rendering out videos on the A580 here. If we hop into Blender, we're talking about 945 points on the monster benchmark versus 514 on the 6600. Now the junk shop benchmark, it's only 80 on the A580 versus 257 on the RX 6600. I don't know exactly why that's the case. If you guys might know why that's the case, let me know. But jump over to the classroom benchmark and the, the A580 is 489 points versus 242 on the 6600. The ARC A580 at $180 might be the best card that you can get in terms of productivity. So I guess I should also talk about the AIB model of card that I have here. This is a Sparkle Orc OC version of the A580. And across all my testing, this card performs really freaking well. It is very quiet, very cool. Most of the time, the fans were only spinning at like 1400 RPM, I think, or something like that. There's this interesting feature that the hotter the card gets, the, the lights will change. So they start out blue, then it goes to yellow, and then I think it goes to red if the card gets hot, hot. But mine never even got that hot, so it was only ever at yellow. For some reason, it has two 8-pin connectors on it, which rates this card at 375 watts. This card will never draw that much power, and if it does, then I am scared for you. You would have a bomb in your PC at that point in time. Blue and black looks nice. I can't hate it whatsoever. I, I don't know, I'll say Sparkle actually did a really nice job. Would I recommend the ARC A580 at $180? It's, it's difficult, but at this current moment in time, I would say no, because it's just inconsistent. There are advantages to getting the ARC A580 over AMD's competition, even though it is a little bit, generally speaking, slower in gaming performance. And I'll leave the spreadsheet of all of the games that I tested and cards that I tested in the description if you guys wanna take a closer look at them. But if you really need AV1 encoding on a budget with a card that can still game, then the A580 is a good option. You're still getting eight gigabytes of VRAM, you're getting fast memory as well. You know, it's just the inconsistency We'll have to see how that improves over time. Hopefully it will improve until it's very consistently keeps updating their drivers for their graphics cards. So it wouldn't surprise me that this card gets some major improvements in the future. But at this moment, I just have some difficulty recommending it to somebody on a budget, especially when you don't have another graphics card. Like if this one doesn't work in the game, you know, what else are you gonna use? It's a budget card. This is your only option. I think you want one that is as reliable as you can possibly get. But at the very least, it's exciting to see a car coming into the market that is $180 and did put up a pretty good fight against the AMD competition, though I know it didn't really win. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and y'all have a good 
rest of your day or whatever you're doing. See you in the next video. Peace.